Welcome to another episode of the Playground Podcast. Today, I am joined by the fabulous Nina Sandania. She is a personality that most of the people in Dubai know, but also a United Nations speaker. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. So good to see you finally after Mm. so long. I know. Oh my God, we have so much to talk about. I don't even know where to start. I know. A lot of catching up, sweetheart. So you're a mama now. I'm a mom of two. Can you believe it? No, I cannot. Two. No, I cannot. It's unbelievable. I cannot. I wake up every morning. It's like, are these two my kids? Who are they? Like, who are they? They come with their little feet like in the morning. You're like, what are you? Are you Why are you in my house? I have the same thoughts every single morning. But it's amazing. It is so amazing. Okay. But tell me, you're a mother as well. Yeah. Mama Since I saw hunt. you last time. Yeah. I am a mom, mom of two. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> That's a great start. What happened? How did, how did, who is this man in my house? And who are these kids? And where did they come from? It's um, definitely a question I have every morning. <laughs> so you found love in Dubai. I did. I did. I did. I, I still today, I don't know how, because after 12 years living here, mm-hmm. none of my boyfriends actually lived in this country till I met my husband. I did not. It was very difficult for me to find someone here. And I kind of think no kind of why. I think Dubai is like a transit country. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people come here to more like in and out, at least You know, uh, we're talking about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. uh, People didn't or didn't think that they're going to stay here and live here. So therefore, it was a transit country. So nobody wanted to settle down. People wanted to have fun. It was a lot of young, single. So now 2024 in Dubai, you've been around for a while and you've seen people come and leave. What advice would you give women who are looking for love? And I know so many. I mean, you look at the Facebook groups and there's groups like, you know, are we dating the same guy and Dubai cheekers and whatnot? They're all speaking about the same challenges. We want to meet someone. What advice would you give them? You know what? Uh, it's a little bit sad because, as I said before, Dubai is a transit country. And it uh, at least it used to be. A lot of people came here to build their businesses or they were offered very good jobs. And they didn't have that mentality, especially the men, to settle down and live here. So they wanted more to come here, make their money, and then go back to their countries. But because the world has changed, Dubai has become the number one country, or UAE has become the number one country to live in, especially either you're single or you have families. Now it's changed. A lot of people are coming. But the thing is, when it depends what sort of generation we're talking about. If it's people in our age, they're coming to Dubai, it's difficult for them to meet a husband here, somebody here, because most of the people are now married with kids. Okay. Uh, UAE is a very small country. Yeah. You know, it is not, you know, the population is quite limited. Yeah. And the numbers are limited. The numbers are limited. uh, And the majority that now come from outside the world, there are families that bringing their kids and wife for the safety reasons and the opportunities Mm -hmm. in the UAE. So for a girl want to now move to Dubai in our age or in this generation, it's going to be a bit difficult to find a person that is looking for the same thing as the women are, especially when it comes to men, because the single men that are coming now are very, very young. They're coming here, they have the opportunities. Either that's that, they're thinking, okay, we just want to make it, we want to leave, go back to our country, so so the younger generation. And the older generation already are married with kids. So it's sad to say it is difficult to meet a candidate for a single girl. In this country. But you never know, right? You pray and hope for the best. You, you know, hope is always there. If you don't have hope, you don't succeed in life. If you have hope, always, of course, you will eventually find someone. I believe, you know, everyone has a destiny written for them from the day they're born. Yeah. It doesn't matter in what age, but I believe, highly believe, that you will find that life partner or the love of your life uh once at least one time in your lifetime okay so there we go ladies for the single ladies and sorry (laughs) 
import <laughs> import men, I guess. Yes, we need to import more import men. Import more men. Import <laughs> to, to the UAE. Import more men. Right. So I want to go back to the mom life. So yes. did you always want kids? You know what? I always loved kids. And I always wanted kids. I was godmother for five kids wow. before I, you know, got married and everything. So I knew that I'm going to have it, but I was one of those girls that I didn't want to get married early and I didn't want to have kids early. So um, I was actually engaged three times uh, wow. before okay. I uh, Did you get to keep the rings? That's the most important thing. It, it's, it wasn't like a choice. I gave it back myself okay. because I was the one that broke up okay. uh, these engagements. So I felt it's always oh, quite stupid of me. I shouldn't have. Yeah, <laughs> keep the but, rings, girl. But yeah, keep the rings. I tell every girl, if you're engaged, you break it, God forbid, keep the rings. And then you can do another nice ring. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Or you sell let I get a lot of money for it. Exactly. <laughs> no, so I give it back. But the thing is, you know, I didn't want, I wanted to wait to find a person, a life partner that would be my best friend, that I could see have the same values as me and the values that I was brought up with and that I could see could be a perfect father for, the, yeah. for my children. And uh, the thing... Three of my ex fiancés, very lovely people, but like I got cold feet just, you know, before, like one was like a few months before the wedding, one was six months before the wedding, because at those moments I felt, no, I don't think this is going to be the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with. And I wanted someone that I could, you know, tick the boxes, all the boxes yeah. I needed. I've actually heard that before. Marry the guy that you think will be a great father. Yes. And a that best is friend. the most important thing. And a best friend. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Those two, I think, are the most important uh, things you have to think, like, look into in a man that you want definitely to Definitely not money, right? Don't go for money. No, definitely not money. Like, obviously, you know, you don't, it's bad to say, you, you, you don't want to marry a person that is not stable and cannot take care of his family. Uh-huh. But at the same time, you don't need to look for like a person that is uh, like a billionaire with yachts, private jets mm -hmm. and all that, because that's not going to bring happiness. Yeah. You should look for somebody at least in your own level. Yeah. And even for girls, I always say either similar to yourself or a bit above you. It doesn't need to be 10 step above, above you. Yeah. Don't have those expectations because those expectations, unfortunately, a lot of girls have, especially when they come to Dubai, yeah. they want to find the gold. They want to find a rich husband that will yeah. take care of them and do everything. And unfortunately, these are the girls that, you know, will never find that life partner because with that, you don't get stability. You know, with money, having all that, doesn't mean that you're going to be a happy life, have a happy life, everything's going to be perfect, you're going to find the perfect husband with, uh, you know, being a great father. So money has nothing to do with being a good person. Okay, good. I like that. Yes. So then getting pregnant, you got married and then you decided, yes, I'm going to start a family now. How was that journey? So we got married and um, the funniest part was... Uh, the wedding, the back and forth on the wedding... <laughs> The back and forth of the wedding was just awful because we were supposed to have... We went to New York, obviously, to uh, just sign mm -hmm. uh, our signature, just the two of us with our best friends. But the actual wedding was supposed to be three months after. But uh, what happened was that, unfortunately, my um, uh, husband's mother got ill. So we had to uh, postpone the wedding to the year after. Then uh, we... The time came for the second time to get, you know, have a wedding. And all my friends from all around the world already had their dresses, everything yeah. was done. Then unfortunately she got sick again. So we had to postpone the wedding one more time. And this continued for two, it's one more time after that. And then my dog passed away. I was oh my god, I remember your remember doggy. Remember Rocco? I do. Yes. Okay. Dog was I went into a depression. I was like, you know what? I don't care. I want to have a child. Let's try to uh, just have a baby. I don't care if I'm pregnant. We can have the wedding party when I'm pregnant. Because yeah. it's kind of cute. Because we're already married. Yeah. Like, you know? yeah. I just didn't have that wedding. And my father didn't have the chance to walk me down the aisle. So 
so we're like, okay, let's start trying. So we tried for eight months. And, you know, when every month, you know, when you're trying, it's such a stressful thing to mm. do the test. Am I pregnant? Am I not pregnant? And eight months, it's, you know, I didn't get pregnant. It takes its toll on you, doesn't it? It Just does because... Trip, like. Yeah, it's it's stressful because you're like, you know, I'm ovulating. Let's, you know, l- let's make a baby. <laughs> Maybe yeah. we cannot use that. <laughs> yeah. No, we cannot use that. In the, in the podcast we can keep it we can keep it oh, everyone okay. knows how babies are made right it's fine we can keep it uh, so then I was like okay what are the options maybe something's wrong with me or something is wrong with you let's go to a doctor and see and I didn't know much about the IVF uh, but my mom, uh, four years before that, had forced me to go and freeze my eggs. But even that, I didn't think freezing your eggs is IVF. You know, it was like she was telling me this is good for you if you don't get married and blah, 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 blah. So anyhow, so then we go to this IVF doctor and I told him, listen, this is what's happening. Something is wrong with me or my husband. They took the tests. Nothing was wrong with me and nothing was wrong with my husband. And then they said, listen, it takes time. Maybe you should give it one more year and it might work. And if it doesn't come back. And I was like, no, 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 no. I don't want to wait one more year. I'm not 20 years old, you know. Yeah. So uh, I don't want that. I want to get pregnant now. What are my options? He's like, well, you can do IVF. So how old were you at that? I was 37. Okay, 37. Okay. We started the treatment and I uh, took the frozen eggs. Oh, yeah. This is how I forgot about the most important part. So wait, you froze your eggs a few years before. A few years before How many did you freeze? So I had 17 eggs. Wow, mashallah, that's good. Not embryos, 17 eggs. Yeah, but that's still a great number to extract. It was good because, you know, I... I was not like a, I was quite a healthy. Yeah. So then he said, why don't we uh, take Use those eggs. eggs? Okay, cool. And we did that. And when we wanted to do the embryos, when they defrost them, 17 eggs out of 17, nine died. Oh my God. Okay, immediately. Did it make it? Okay. A- immediately. Did it make it? And then uh, the remaining, they um, uh, obviously they did the embryos. And then when you put the embryo in your eggs, that's when you see if it's taking or not. Okay. So then you had six. Did you yes, do all the six? Yes, exactly. All the six and only one embryo lasted. Oh, my goodness. Out of that. So, uh, and then even that died. So it was just like, it was just a waste of time to to do that whole thing again and defreeze them. And like my um, advice to girls, obviously, if you're not married and you don't know, it's always good to to have it, but it's better to do IVF with fresh eggs. So then when that didn't work, then I did uh, the IVF and uh, the first round worked for me. I got, I think I got like 14 eggs. And then the embryos became, good embryos were like eight. And then it takes three days for it to develop. And the last two days, I had two boys, because you can see, right? Yeah. Two boys and two girls. And we're like, okay, fine, you know what? Let's do, I have twins. So I want two boys. Because I actually never wanted girls. I want, I always wanted two boys. Okay. So, but the two boys, the embryos didn't make it. So it was two girls. And then they put in two two girls. And during, you know, the pregnancy, like the first two weeks, only one made it. Made it. And it was quite like so a... So basically what you're saying is the numbers, the percentage of the survival of the whole process is what you need to go in with like 20 eggs, you'll lose 10. And then when you make the embryos, you'll use another. The exactly. Numbers are the thing is, uh, normally people do two, three rounds to get more eggs okay you know oh, if you go in and you have like you know five six eggs they always advise you listen maybe you should do another round so we get more eggs okay uh because it is high percentage that these eggs uh die but then again i was older maybe if you're younger it works better for you right you know so so it's it's something like i don't think they have an answer to that mm-hmm. but it's something that i presume but my point is that only one took, and when during the pregnancy, I had the worst pregnancy of all time. Everything happened to me in the book. The only thing that didn't happen to me is for me to die. Literally, 
every single thing in the book happened to me uh, from the IVF. The side effects were so bad. I put on already 10 kilos before they put in the egg. Wow. Um, then I got diabetes. I was on oh the highest God. insulin. I got anemic. I didn't <gasps> have enough blood. Uh, my iron levels were low. Uh, it was like everything. I got uh, hernia. I got like every single thing that can happen. Uh, I got uh, heart murmurs. I It was oh awful. My God. Like it was awful. COVID happened. It was just the worst time of my life till the day I delivered. Then when we delivered, it was my girl, right? And I delivered and we went back to Sweden. So when she was born, I was like, thank God that it wasn't two. We just want <laughs> one child, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because we're like, oh, God was with us. We can't yeah. do two. Yeah. Like one is... Barely making it through barely, one. Barely, barely. Yeah. And I said, Manny, it's never going to be it to, uh, the number two. Yeah, Even we're if done. you want, because this pregnancy killed me. Yeah. And even the doctor is like, it's not, you yeah. know, this is not normal. Okay. I put on 40 kilos. That's insane. Okay. It was insane. Like you would never uh, recognize me. Thank God I was hiding in a bush in a forest in Sweden. And yeah. it was COVID lockdown. Yeah. So nobody saw me. It was only my husband. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it must have had, it, it was you know, awful. mentally, this would have taken its toll on it you. It did, it did. But on the bright side, I was in the nature. I could walk. I, could, I had like, it, I wasn't locked down. Yeah. I had like animals around me okay. and it was fantastic that way. Fresh air, but it was bad. Then I stopped breastfeeding when Leonor was five months old. And I got pregnant. Naturally. Naturally with the second wow. child. But they say knowing. this, they say that, here's a fun fact, right? Eight million babies are born through IVF today. Mm -hmm. Like, really? whereas 40 years ago, this is something that was, you know, still being looked into. I mean, until today, I feel like people hide it when they have IVF, which I'm not sure why. I know so many people going through IVF and it's amazing. And it's, you know, even if you don't need it, it's a great process, isn't it? Because you get to, amazing. it's everything's organized. You get to choose the timing and, Everything. It's amazing. And I think it's sad that people are not talking about it because uh, by women hiding this fact that they're doing IVF, it doesn't, like they don't, other women that are in the same situation, they lose their hope. Exactly. The more people talk about it and say, well, look, I did IVF. It worked for me. Other women will feel more comfortable yeah. by accepting, okay, you know what? There's nothing wrong with IVF. All these babies are coming. You know what, uh, you know, uh, the gender is going to be, if the uh, baby is going to be healthy. This is a fantastic thing that the technology has developed since 40 years back till now. Yeah. And it's something that people should not be ashamed of. It's something that people should be actually proud of yeah. and share it and say, this share is it. what, yes. Share it, of course. Sharing is so important. But I did hear that, when you are trying to conceive, there's a lot of pressure on you, right? So your body just can't do it. But then as soon as a lot, this happens a lot, people who adopt or have IVF, literally two, three months later, they're pregnant naturally. Yes. So this is what happened, This right? is what happened to me, I think, because you're very fertile after IVF, at least oh, one wow. year after. Okay. Yes, this is what they're saying. And uh, when you... I think when your body goes into that mode, because you're not relaxed after pregnancy, I tell you that. It's like the opposite. You have like a baby, it's like, what is this? You don't know anything about yeah. this little creature. Because I was freaking out every day that I'm gonna break this baby and I'm gonna drop this baby, you know? But I think with IVF is because you're fertile a year after, after yeah. that's why a lot of people get pregnant naturally the second time. Yeah, This is uh, what the doctors told me. Yeah, I've heard this a lot. But so then you got pregnant all of a sudden, your baby's five without months Without knowing, old. yes. Oh my God. Without knowing. So so the, the funniest part was like, I, I was sick all the time. I felt like, you know, there's something wrong with me because it's five months after my pregnancy, right? So I would go to doctors, three different doctors, like, no, Nina, it's because you just gave birth, your hormones are imbalanced and this, nothing is wrong with you. One said, I have an infection. And then we went to a specialist, I was like, this doctor doesn't understand what's wrong with me, something is wrong. And then they took all the blood tests and then it took like uh, one day and then they called me, they're like, oh, Miss Nina, congratulations, you're pregnant. And then I said to her, I was like, I was laughing. I was like, oh, I, I'm sorry, sweetheart, you, you called the wrong person. <laughs> I, actually, you know, you, you probably took the wrong file. I just gave birth. So, uh, so you need to check your file. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And then she hung up, right? And then she called again 
and said, no, Miss Nina, your it's blood you. is back, it's you. I was like, but that's not possible. So I was like, what are you talking about? It's like, no, you are. I was like, but it's not possible, you know? It's like, but uh, yes, it is, you have to come in. And I was telling my husband, oh my God, oh my God, I have to do abortion immediately, you know? <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> Uh, like, 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 uh, we have to do this. Yeah, of this course, is, you're not in like, the mental space. No, God, no, I went through, I could have died during my pregnancy. It's like, no way, you know how? Sorry. Sorry. No, that's fine, so we like, can keep that. So it's like, no way that this is going to happen. We went to the doctors and they said, yeah, you're pregnant and it looks like you're three months pregnant. You got pregnant when your baby was two months? No, so she was f she was five months old when I stopped breastfeeding. Oh, right? okay, right. She was, that, that's when I saw, and then I got pregnant during that. Okay. So she was she was five months when I got pregnant because my baby was like the, the uh, Oliver was three already three months in my stomach without knowing, and you cannot do abortion. And I was crying, thinking all these negative things. I was like, oh my God, he's gonna be sick. He's gonna, it's gonna be something wrong with him because you know, my age, uh, all the problems I have with my body. And it was awful. And I had a similar awful pregnancy with him. But touch wood, he's amazing. Nothing is wrong with him. Good. Although he's a very big disaster as a human being. <laughs> like, it's like, I never seen anything. Like him is like a little animal. Yeah, but boys, <laughs> they say boys are more difficult than girls. So maybe. M maybe that's that's, that's okay. Because I took him to six doctors. Like doctors, because my girl is an angel. It's like something is wrong with this child. <laughs> Can you just check for all these diseases? Like Miss Nina, nothing is wrong with this child. I was like, no, 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 no. Something is wrong because he's aggressive, he bites, he pulls, his tantrums. He's a boy. And he's like, he's a boy. <laughs> he's a boy. He's a boy. <laughs> so I want to touch on, um, like, you, your daughter had an accident. Yes. Okay. And that really changed you. It For did. about a year, you were just missing. I was missing. It was awful. You know how you believe in, because, you know, I've been in public eye for most of my life since I was 14. And it's always been like, you face people that have bad eye on you, evil eyes is around. Unfortunately, our society yeah. has become like that, that people cannot be happy fathers. Mm -hmm. And with that, it attracts a lot of negative energy. Okay. I was not a believer of negative energies or evil eyes till actually I started seeing it and experiencing it. And uh, when my daughter was born, she was a very unusual baby because uh, she was born with a wig. Like she had, she had hair like yeah, this. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. So, so the whole like world, all my friends and everyone's like, this baby is very unusual baby. She looked like a living doll. Yeah. And they even thought that I was photoshopping her hair because it was COVID, oh, wow. nobody. And saying like, oh, Nina's photoshopping this baby's hair and putting a wig on the Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, and everyone's like, this is the cutest baby everywhere we went. And uh, she got a lot, a lot of attention on her and on me and my husband was a lot of attention. So uh, one day we were walking on the street and it's, I get goosebumps. Uh, we were in Stockholm, Sweden, and I was eating an ice cream. I was pregnant with uh, Oliver. And this woman goes, Nina, Nina, Nina. And I'm turning around, I'm thinking I'm knowing her. And because, you know, I, I worked in TV in Sweden and my parents know everyone. I know everyone. I think somebody, but I didn't know her. I was like, oh my God, I've been following you for so long. And suddenly she bends down to my daughter and she started stroking her hand. Oh, you're the cutest, touching her hair. And first of all, a stranger should not touch your child in a way during COVID. Oh my God. During yeah. COVID. Touching, and my husband freezes, and wow. I'm freezing. So but what then what do you on? do, right? You do freeze in a situation you like that. You freeze. I was freezing. And then she put her hand on my stomach, <gasps> started to think, and, 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 and she walked out. She's like, oh my God, you know, your child is so beautiful. I, uh, I don't have children, but I love your child. She walked away, and me and my husband walked, and my husband, I was like, babes, this was so strange. And he's like, this is so strange, Nina. We walked to the hotel room. I went to the bathroom. Within five minutes, I hear the scream of death, which was my child. It was a boiling, uh, my uh, husband was doing uh, uh, her formula. Yeah. So the kettle had a default in it. It was broken, so it was, as you see, like it was boiling, it was on a high table. And Leonora has just started crawling, crawling and oh standing my up. God. And it was another table like this uh, uh, um, uh, below it. So while it's boiling, it's leaking from underneath to the lower oh table. Oh my God. Leonora stands up, put her hand, and my husband doesn't see that because he's in the 
level of that. And her, stu- her hand gets stuck. She cut the story short. She got a third degree burn. <gasps> and we were in hospital for two months. Imagine it was two days before her one year birthday. And we had a big party planned. Two months in a hospital. And uh, then uh, they didn't do any surgeries. They were just cleaning the wound, putting it. And they got it. Uh, they actually made it worse. So we come back to Dubai. And her hand gets con- contracted <gasps> like this. So the skin, because she doesn't have skin, so it goes like this. So then we had to relocate to London. She did eight surgeries in one and a half months. And the skin grafting from different parts. And it was just a disaster. And then from that point, a lot of bad things been happening uh, to us. And it is, and I I, I took, like for one year I went off. Like I was not engaged with people or social media. I was pregnant with Oliver. But then I had to come back because it's my work. We are promoting my work and productions and everything through my social media. Uh, so I had to be back. But um, it's been difficult when something happens well, to a child. Yeah, absolutely. I remember that story. Um, okay, let's talk about speaking about public eye. And yeah. I feel like I just want to touch on this before we wrap up today. You know, back in 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, Nina was like, you know out there you're one of what we used to call back then key opinion leaders and socialites in the scene and things have really changed now that it's 2024 oh yeah so obviously social media came in tiktok and instagram and and the personalities have changed and the scene has changed so you go to events back then we would go to events and we'd see the same faces yes right yes now things are really different what are your thoughts on that you know, it's both good and bad. Like, during my time when I got here, it was my profession. I was a producer, director, and a television host. Um, so I I was the media profile because that was my profession. And people followed me, and they invited me to all events, and I was face of brands. Uh, it was no social media whatsoever at the time that I got here. Uh, so they were literally using me and uh, uh, all the TV personalities or artists or famous people, singers, we've always been, uh, you can call it influencers in when it comes to brands, uh, things, but it wasn't called influencers. We were the profiles or they called it the celebrities those times. We were celebrities because of our profession. Yeah. You know, so we were celebrities. I was a celebrity because I was good in my profession being a TV host and a producer and a director and selling my format. So that's why I was a celebrity because I was in every magazine. People talked yep. about it. But what have changed, unfortunately, with uh, uh, influencers is like anybody cannot be famous by doing nothing. You, you know what I mean? It has good things about it. You have yeah. uh, talented people that are like proper content creators yep. and showing the world. It takes a lot of but, effort, but, yeah. But, but being a content creator, showing the world, showing, you know, uh, things that you actually do good for other people, they can follow, that is a different thing. That I respect because that is a profession. An influencer for that is great. But I do not uh, appreciate, because I'm old school, I'm coming, you know, I went to university, I worked hard, I, I worked very hard to get where I am, you know, and get my recognition was working hard. But now anybody can be post a picture of themselves and be super famous, but don't have any whatsoever talents. You know, they cannot talk. They cannot, they just put a clothes on and and take a picture and they are uh, somebody. That for me, it's a little bit of balance. If you are good, if you're a model, if you work as a model, mm-hmm. you work hard, mm-hmm. you promote yourself, the clothing on a model, fantastic. Mm-hmm. But what's the downside of this, that this generation are not getting educated. They're not getting humble. They don't know what hard work because, is. Because, I mean, they, they can don't, make a lot of money. Yeah, but, but money it, brings, uh, see what the world is. Yeah. It's world war. It's chaotic. It's yeah. poverty. It's jealousy. It's hatred. Because it brings a lot of money. But then another, it's 1% of these influencers in the world. The majority of the world are not influencers. They are these people that want to be like them, but they can never be like them because they don't have the connections. They don't have the things. Yeah. They cannot get there. So it's bad and good yeah. when you call the influencers. You have different influencers. You have influencers that are good at what they're doing, that are changing the world, that are talking yeah. about that, that are showing their travels. People are like, oh, she was in this country. I want to go there. Yeah. Amazing. So it has its good and bad sides of being an influencer. For me, if you're an influencer, if you have a talent, 
that is amazing. But for example, the Kard Kardashians, I think they're the most dirtiest, filthiest family ever existed in human history. Uh, <laughs> and, and whoever praised them and saying, oh, they're so, un they are entrepreneurs, they're business people, they were talking in White House. Why are they talking in White House? Why are they entrepreneurs? Because they sold their body. A mother, what, what etiquette or class or manners have a human being to sell their ch child's body part and videos to get a TV show mm -hmm. to become famous? That is zero respect. And for them, what they have created, they have created a dirty world that politicians are scared of them. They are as dirty because the world is ruled. They have killed so many people, young people, that nobody talks about these Kardashians with all the surgeries that they promoted. Yeah. Uh, and with the body images. The that they're body creating, images. The small waist. This, and small waist, uh, this, bigger lips. They, uh, they dress such an appropriate way to show their breast and all their body parts on red carpet. I'm sorry. And, and, and fashion designers suddenly now, oh, they're fashion icons. It's so trashy. Like I, as I might be older and old school, but no, I love fashion. I grew up in fashion. I was working with all the designers before even any influencers yeah. were there. Yeah. But where, how did our world change to that you being naked on the red carpet and walking around showing half of your breast with cut uh, yeah. uh, crop tops. Not, and show, I yeah. mean, come on. Like, it's I don't what want we want to, our children to yeah. see, right? I mean, I'm not going to tell my kids about social media. I'm no, but they will, sweetheart. Exist. Even if you say about social media, they go to school. You cannot control your kids. We have to think they're like realistic because we can control it at home, but it's a world of digital for yeah. our generation. But do we want and praise this dirty family that they are so good, they're entrepreneurs, while they're still walking and showing their bottom, their uh, thing, their body parts, and they get praised for that and saying they're entrepreneurs? In what way are they entrepreneurs? Because they're famous, they have followers. Yep. They get, oh, I can talk in White House. Talk about, uh, I can be with Donald Trump. Or, oh, I can do a lipstick because I put so much lip fillers that damage so many other young kids yeah. that don't even have the money to go and do it because they think these people are gods. Yeah. They think this is the world that they want to be in. This is the world that is now we're living. They don't talk about that, how many people they have damaged, how many people and kids that stopped going to school and want anxiety to anxiety and mental health. Mental and health, anxiety, they cannot afford what they're wearing. And also, uh, like, they just want to take naked pictures of themselves. With that comes rape. Uh, it yeah. comes like people getting murdered. Yeah. You know, this, yeah. so this is not thing that people effects. don't talk yeah. about. No, you know, and marketing perspective why marketing that i'm sorry there's so many talented amazing beautiful Success whatever successful ML Clooney for yeah, one exactly you know well i'm not gonna go there account. but uh oh <laughs> well, we have dirt on her as well or no what? but you know if you call yourself a uh, you know human rights lawyer yeah. you will stand up for what is happening in palestine correct yeah. you would stand up for the world not yeah. only what you've been told yeah and because uh, most of their friends are uh, coming yeah. from a country uh, uh, as that is causing all these problems, yeah. they stay to stay silent. If you're working as a human rights lawyer, yeah, no matter who your friends are, that is your job. You stand for what is right. Yes, 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 That's yes, 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 yes. I'm going to tell you the old school way yes. of how we used to do this, what they call now influences, yes. right? So back... I'm not going to tell you guys the years because I don't want to show my age, but we would literally... <laughs> I'm still 26, by I'm the still way. 26. Girl, I'm 15. Okay, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing here. I should be at school. <laughs> um, so we used to get magazines, and this yeah. is why PR was so important back then yes. for any personality, and you actually have to have depth. And this is why I have so much respect for journalists until yes. this day, because yes. guess what? Even in the UAE, until this day, journalists don't take anything that comes through. You really have to sell a story, which is sure. why you don't see fluff coming through in magazines. Yes. So we would have folders and it would be categorized based on industry. So we'd have like, you know, healthcare, beauty, fashion, social scene. And these people would go through magazines yes. and say, oh, Nina, cool. She'd get, be a great personality for this profile, this, this brand, this brand. Yes. Cool, let's put her in this folder. Yes. And then if a brand comes through and we're suggesting a brand engagement, we would take that folder out and go through the profiles 
and reach out to these people and then work with them to either dress them or whatnot. Because you have a professional background in PR, correct? Like oh, that, yeah. that's what you this always is, had. So yeah. you knew how to do it. Well, of course. And you had to do a lot of digging and a lot of research, right? Absolutely. So we didn't have Instagram. We can just go no. through numbers. And so like my biggest advice right now to influencers would be build something solid alongside. So if you have the numbers, which is amazing, it yes. takes so much work to get to these numbers. Of course. Take that. First of all, Google yourself and click on media. And if there is no press coverage that yes. comes out, you have a problem. Yes. Right? So whether you launch a product or you launch something, because if here's a question you always have to ask yourself. If social media dies tomorrow, which hopefully it doesn't, because this is online as well on social media. Yes. How, where, where do I stand as a, as a brand or as an entity? What is my value? Yes. This we'll is go why, back to print. Go back to print. Yes. And this is why and I don't think journalism is ever going to die. I Never. really don't. Because even if it's not print, it is online and, and, yes. and it still gives credibility, in my opinion. So if you don't have that press value, exactly, then what are you? I mean, some of the biggest celebrity deals that we do are with actual actors who are able to shoot for 14 hours so you have to exactly. also ask yourself as an influencer am i able to stand on heels and shoot in the middle of the desert in exactly the heat for 14 hours exactly exactly so i see what you mean yes. whether like it's you're an influencer build a career around it if you don't have one 100%. launch a product which 100%. is what kylie jenner did right but she also did a lot of other things to get attention yes but kylie jenner wouldn't have her product and it wasn't she did uh, that is the thing she did so many outrageous things to get these followers because these young people they're very if you know her followers are from eight years old That's till crazy. from eight if you see they say from eight years old to 25 year olds i mean an eight year old to see that how she is the body and shape and and thinking in a head i need to put makeup on when i was eight years old i didn't know what makeup was you know and and thinking oh she didn't go to school she stopped that she's showing her body parts she's doing this and that well i'm gonna do the same but they don't have the same connections as these girls have yeah. so and therefore she used her followers yes but at the same time she poisoned these people to yeah. follow her because of her outrageous uh things that she did yeah uh, and 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 that is sad because without these followers and without her outrageous acts she would never have a lip gloss she went and put made with no lip kilos of uh fillers in her lips and on top of that lying for a year no no no, these are my lips and making a mockery of the world and saying why are you lying these are my girls lips are gonna question themselves everybody right now, questions right? so now the girls think it's okay to lie so she promotes lying do whatever it is no matter what it is but lie you get away with it yeah then the world comes one year after and praise her because her mother called a company that is already existing that doing literally Lips, makeup. Makeup, yeah. makeup, you have to study chemistry. You have to study everything. You have to know everything about it. What did she do? Oh, you do it. We put her name on it and we go out. Done. And this poor girl said being poisoned by her all by and then suddenly she becomes an entrepreneur. What is the talent in there? Yeah, I agree. Like Huda Beauty, she worked so hard. Yeah. Huda and Katan, they worked hard. They started their blog. They studied. Yeah, they I went remember. to the factories. They did for years yeah. and years. It took Huda and uh, and Mona 15 years to I become. Remember. And we're talking about hard work. Yeah. Around the clock, they went. They mixed it themselves her blog with was the amazing. people. Like yes. Her blog. And I get goosebumps because they are amazing what they did. Yeah. That you understand. These are the people that made a brand. They were there. They studied it. They they uh, tried it. They did everything with it. Yeah. But Kylie, why is she an entrepreneur? Her mother called a company boom and then people think that, "Oh, she's so successful." That's it. So as we a wrap up this what yes. can we look forward to from nina what are you doing right now what can we look forward to now that so, the mama baby life is yes mama baby life is there so i'm doing a project which i cannot wait to uh, launch might be the end of this year maybe next year it's going to be something i cannot say it but is it's it going to be fashion? something uh, with kids oh it's going to be something with kids and i cannot wait to tell you all about it it's uh if it goes as it's going to go, it's going to be something, a big chain around the world. 
Oh my God. Yes. I can't wait to hear about it. So, uh, so that, that, and then obviously I still work, uh, you know, speaking for SDG and UN Women and, and that. So this is my main job, but that's the hundred percent my focus on that. Oh, we can't that wait. I'm doing. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And you look amazing. Loved it. Thank you. you I'm look trying. So good. <laughs> I'm trying. Thank you for listening. This episode was brought to you by Playday, the app that helps you build your child's social circle. Um, see you guys on the next episode.